You ever try to get abs? You ever try to get all the abs and get that shit down here? You ever try to do it? It's fucking impossible. <laughs> Past the age of 19, you can't do it without tons of help. You gotta buy all these exercise tapes. You gotta read about nutrition. You gotta get a personal trainer and having you fucking running along. You need like your own chef and he's like, okay, don't eat it yet. Don't eat it yet. All right, now, eat it. Start consuming it. All right, stop. Slow down, stop, stop. Spit it out, spit it out. I told you to stop. Get on the electrical. Now you like that Brussels sprout? Did you like that Brussels sprout? Because now you're paying for it. It's a fucking miserable experience. Just walking around, your whole body's eating yourself. You know, you want some cake? No, no, just take a salad. Balsamic vinaigrette on the side, no croutons. Oh my God, when is the photo shoot? I want to kill myself. It's horrible. You ever try to get fat? No, you don't have to. It's effortless. You can fucking lay on your back watching your favorite show, just shoveling shit down your throat. What are you doing? I'm getting fat. I'm getting fat. You got a trainer? Don't need one. It's natural. I just eat everything that makes my sugar salt go like, yeah, woo, yeah. Comes right in. Nice roll of fucking flab. So one time I'm flying into Albany, New York, okay, a city that nobody really goes to. So I'm on a smaller plane and everything's going great. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, we hit this turbulence. Just Right? And it stops, and everybody looks around like laughing nervously, like, oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, it comes back with a vengeance. You can literally hear like the metal the plane's made out of, like. All of a sudden, this dude, like three rows back, starts making like these bitchy noises, like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not gonna lie, I have never been so fucking scared in my entire life. Dude, that noise is acceptable out of a female or a child. To turn around and see a 37-year-old mustachioed male going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, the hair was standing up on my arms. I'm praying to a higher power. I don't even believe in the shit. I just wish I had the balls to turn around and be like, dude, would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> Jesus Christ, be a man, push it down. Push it down, deny your feelings, act like you have answers. Do some man shit right now. Do some man shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, you think I'm not up here thinking, oh, ah, I am. <laughs> but how does that help us for me to join you and turn this fuselage into a haunted house, you know? <laughs> And you know what kills me? What absolutely kills me is some woman is gonna fall in love with this guy. Marry him and make half ooh, ooh, fucking kids. And you know what? We become weaker as a species. We do. No means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no, all right? But no, stop it, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God, you're being so bad, stop it, no. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I wanna do it, but I'm afraid you're gonna judge me, so I'm just gonna make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people, right? <laughs> but then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Uh, Your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. <laughs> yeah, and you're just sitting there like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. I've been battling with my girlfriend a lot lately. Um, she loves to watch the Oprah Winfrey show and I love to watch her watch the Oprah show. <laughs> and then I wait for Oprah to say something that I don't agree with and then I take it out on my girlfriend, because I'm a jerk. <laughs> so, Oprah brings out her first guest, right? She gives her this huge intro. She's written a book, she's been in a movie, and she does the most difficult job on the planet. She's a mother. <laughs> so immediately, I look at my girlfriend, I'm like, really? Being a mother is the most difficult job on the planet? 
How many moms died on ice road truckers last season? <laughs> you know, any moms get washed overboard on deadliest catch? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but which job would you rather have? You want to scoop crabs up off the bottom of the ocean, hanging off some rusty tugboat, catching that trap to the back of your head every couple of weeks? Or you want to hang out in the sunshine with a couple of rugrats? You know, you can send them to bed anytime you want on some trumped up charges. Yeah. Trumped up charges, yeah, because you want to have a drink and watch the price is right. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. No, maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is the most difficult job. I mean, I thought roofing in the middle of July is a redhead. You know? Yeah, I, th I thought that that was a difficult job. But evidently, these mothers, they're bending over at the waist, putting DVDs in the DVD players. I don't know how they do it. How do they do it? Oh, the way they push that stroller with the round wheels. Yeah, and the baby in there. It's the most difficult job on the planet. <laughs> Going to war, pinned down by a sniper. What a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. You ever burp a baby and forget to put that towel up there? Oh, there's another shirt you gotta wash, right? Oh yeah, lift with your knees and put it in that machine that does it for you. <laughs> People, any job you can do in your pajamas is not difficult. Sure, it's draining, but come on, man. Being a stay-at-home mom, that's like my dream job. No boss, no time card, no taxes. You're off the grid. <laughs> Hanging out all day, making grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Giving a puppet show, you dress like a dragon. <laughs> then some other adult, some other adult comes home and gives you money. Actually, Nerd Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way, and then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! Right? And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists gotta go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we gonna get all of this into this? I mean. What year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear. Right? Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys! See you in eight years! Where you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! Right? And all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? down there Comic-Con and all their nerd mecca. They are all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> like he's, like he's Tesla. Tapping in the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me! <laughs> Remember that? 
Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy. How the fuck was that dude like any of them? Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. Nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero? This is the guy? This is what all the silence is about? New phone can't fit the old charger, so then you gotta throw it out, ends up in the ocean around some octopus's neck. Do you realize how much sea life is ecstatic that that man is no longer walking the earth? <laughs> That's where it all ends up, you know. Doesn't go in a landfill, ends up in the ocean. You realize that? I hate people who say I don't pollute. I don't pollute. Yeah, you do. You use shit and you throw it out. What, you think because you put it in like a basket, it just poof, disappears? <laughs> Everything you ever used is somewhere. You ever think about that? Remember that flannel shirt you bought back in the day when you got into Pearl Jam? <laughs> That's out there somewhere. Probably on some porpoise's face, tr trying to get it off. <laughs> Stupid little flippers. All the fads. You remember rollerblading? Remember that? Everybody had them. We set up cones, we did little tricks, right? One little homophobic joke killed that entire fad. What's the hardest thing about rollerblading? Yeah, telling your parents you're gay. Full grown adults, dude, I'm not gay. I don't have the cooties. These mean I suck dick. And they just threw them out. They end up in the ocean. They're made out of plastic, they can't biodegrade. They just break down to little cubes. Fish are breathing them in. Six months later, you're going out, you're getting sushi, you think you're being healthy, you're eating your old rollerblades. I'm becoming a psycho. I've realized that about myself. I am, I watch conspiracy theory and like slap fights till like two in the morning on YouTube, you know? Yeah, I start like piecing shit together. I'm becoming that guy. I'm like that guy, you know, you sit there, you, ever, you know, you're sitting there drinking in a bar and all, you know, some guy's cool, you're talking about the game, then all of a sudden he's just like, you know, there's no gold behind our, our currency. You realize that? You're like, oh yeah, that's great. Pick up your drink, let's fucking walk away. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm becoming. Totally into conspiracy. That's why I think Barack Obama is going to win their, uh, the, the, uh, the election. I think they're going to let him win because they're in the process, yeah, they're in the process of bankrupting this country and I think that they need a black guy to blame it on. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. Dude, it'll totally feed into the rednecks. They'll be like, you see? You see what happened? Dude, he's only half black. Well, that's the half that did it. That's what happened. I bet the white half was saying. Is that too, you know, see, I'm just fucking losing people. I am. I just look at TV and nothing makes sense to me. I'm sick of them telling me shit is shocking that it's completely obvious. Crocodile Hunter dies. Who oh, can you fucking? Yes, yes, I can totally believe it. It's why I watched the show. I watched it every week because I knew eventually he was gonna fucking die, and I, I wanted, I wanted to see it. Right? Oh, I like that, uh, that dog, the bounty hunter video, or the uh, the phone message he left. You know, people are like, can you believe he left that? He left that racist message. It's like, dude, look at him. Look at him, some redneck with a mullet down to his ass. He drives a pickup. He's got the gloves with the fingers cut off. Yeah, who would have thought he had a couple of fucked up ideas rolling around in his head, you know? <laughs> Dude, you know what would have been shocking? If he could play the cello, that would have been shocking, right? Yeah, and then you'd be sitting there like, sitting like, God damn, look at Doc. Here it is, I thought he was some racist on his way to a steak and shake, and hey, he's busting out a little Beethoven. God damn, I owe this guy an apology, you know? God, I'd love to see his iPod. I can't imagine the eclectic mix of music. <laughs> this is how much time I spend alone on the road, man. I actually spent so much time on the, alone on the road, I actually like contemplated milk to the point I can't even fucking drink it anymore. <laughs> sitting there drinking, like, man, this stuff is great, tastes awesome, you know? Then I started thinking, it comes out of the carton, and I just did the police work, it, it comes out of a cow, and I'm like, I am fucking suckling for another species. We have such a crazy relationship with cows. 
You ever think about that? No, you, you can nurse from it, you can eat it, right? You can tip it over when it's sleeping, but if you fuck it, you're going to jail. All right, I'm thinking about getting a dog, everybody. I am. No, I'm at the point. Nothing alive is dependent on me. I, I got I to gotta get out of this, this tailspin, man. So I'm thinking about getting a dog. My girlfriend wants me to, to like, adopt a dog. She's like, you want to adopt a dog? We should rescue one. You want, you want to do that? I'm like, no, no, I don't. She's like, why not? I go, because I think a lot of those dogs, they're, they're a little fucked in the head. <laughs> yeah, how do you think they ended up down there? It's like, dude, that's not a pet store. That's like doggy death row, all right? Why don't we just go to a prison and like adopt an inmate on the off chance that maybe they didn't commit the crime, you know, just roll the dice. Dude, fuck that. I want a brand new 2008 Bulldog, all right? I don't want some, I don't want some like 1995, half a Labrador, has got part of its ear chewed off, you know? Every time I go to use the toaster, it starts freaking out. You know, because his last owner hung him from the ceiling fan every time the Jets didn't cover the over, you know? Dude, that is an animal. That thing could kill you. If it, you know, if a squirrel wanted to fuck me up, if it just started running at me, by the time I processed, like, is that a rat? Is that mechanical? By the time I figured it out, it would have ran up my leg and just taken chunks out of my ear. Then I got to tell that story for the rest of my life, sitting in a bar. Dude, what happened to you? A fucking squirrel, all right? <laughs> Never get laid again. That's what I'm saying, right? I get one of those crazy dogs get up at like three in the morning to take a leak, right? I'm shuffling to the bathroom and that's the exact moment his previous owner used to come home shit-faced and beat the crap out of the dog, right? I got no clue, I'm just, you know, sitting there shuffling to the bathroom. Meanwhile, the dog's getting all amped up, like, fuck this shit, man. I promised myself I wouldn't let this happen again, all right? It's time to man up, man up, ah! It's flying at me. Takes a big chunk out of my neck. Then what, I'm laying on the ground bleeding. What are they gonna do with the dog? They're gonna take him right back down to the prison like some repeat offender, have like shackles on him and stuff. He's just sitting there hopping back in. We knew you'd be back. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Get me a milk bone, you know? <laughs> Wheel him in like Hannibal Lecter with like that lampshade around his neck. <laughs> I gotta work on my temper though. It's something I really gotta do. I let, it, I let, I let, I let like the thoughts just spin away, you know? I was on a plane the other day, I actually had the urge to elbow an old lady in the face. It was like compelling, it was unbelievable. You know when you go to get off a plane, there's like rules when you go to get off the plane, all right? It goes row by row by row. And this lady was all like, ooh, I'm 90, I get to cut everybody, right? So I'm competitive, I start fucking boxing her out, right? Start bringing down like the overhead luggage, you know? So she just starts like waddling around me and all of a sudden I just feel my elbow like, dude, you're gonna take this shit? <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. The whole half of the plane is watching it. Come on, man, come on. Man. Dude, we got a wide open shot. Just, just, just real light. Poof. You don't gotta hit it that hard. And then you can play it off. I'm literally talking to my elbow like, dude, come on, man. We can't do this shit, all right? This chick's like 95 years old. We can't do it. I thought I had my body under control and she got like to right about there and then I felt my foot like, dude, we could still trip her. It's still tripping. He's throwing that out. I'm sick of Obama's wife. <laughs> yeah. This isn't some Republican rant either. It's just kind of first ladies in general. You know, I don't know what it is. All throughout my life with each presidency, like these first ladies, they've just gotten more and more like, like, uh, like chatty. You know? More and more chiming in, like leaning into the frame, <laughs> spitting out their ideas. It's just like, well, why are you talking? <laughs> right? You weren't elected. Shut up. <laughs> Your husband's not running a lemonade stand here. He's running the country. You don't just chime in. <laughs> Let me guess, is this considered sexist? <laughs> it is? Why? Well, okay, you just nodded there, lady. Let me ask you this, all right? Let's say you had a leak in your house, okay? You call a plumber up, he shows up, and he goes, yeah, I think the leak's coming from the upstairs bathroom. We need to shut it up, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, his wife walks in. Who isn't a plumber? And then he goes, yeah, you know, I'm actually thinking it's kind of pretty nice. Hey, wouldn't you be like, with all due respect, shut the f up. I need a plumber in this moment. I'll extend an olive branch here. 
All right, at some point, there's going to be the first female president, right? Exactly. Which means at that moment, you're going to have the first male first lady, right? And when that happens, that dude needs to shut his trap. I don't want to hear a word out of him. I want to hear from the president. You, sir, go do some first lady stuff, all right? Go get yourself some gloves that go up to your elbows. Smile and nod during speeches. Go put your own flair, redecorate in the White House, right? Which leads you to Michelle Obama, right? Now she's sitting there holding up those hashtags. Remember that hashtag, bring back our girls? Remember that? It's like, it blew my mind. It's like, why are you showing me that? I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, what am I going to do to get those girls back? Why don't you look across the dinner table? It's like, you see that guy? That is the leader of the free world. Tell him to pick up a phone, call some Navy SEALs and solve it. What, what am I going to do? Show up with a sharpened mic stand? Hey, Michelle said to bring him back. Oh, it's unreal. I'll tell you what kills me. Hillary Clinton might run. She might, she might run. That, that blows my mind. I mean, honestly, she became a senator. She went from being the president's wife to being a senator. Just like that. Lateral move. That's like Tom Brady's wife becoming the next quarterback of the Rams. It's like what? You hanging out? You just pick it up? I sucked at sports and then I banged Tom Brady and I don't know what happened. I just picked up a ball. I started lacing it. I'm leading receivers. It was incredible. <laughs> I knew it was going to be like this. You know what's funny? There's actually people out there that think a woman being president is actually a good idea. You know? Can you believe that? See that? They do. That'll do something. That'll change things. How? How the f- is that going to change anything? Do you know what the president makes a year? The president makes 400 grand a year. That's it. He's trying to keep billionaires in line, making 400 grand a year. That's all he makes. He makes less than some people blogging on the internet. The president should have f- you money, right? He shouldn't be sitting there with his pockets turning and saying, I need, I need your help to get me, get me the job, right? What do you guys all donate to the campaign? Is that what it is? I'm at that age where everybody I know is getting married. Let me ask you a question. Why the hell do people keep getting married? You know what I mean? Isn't anybody looking at the stats? You know what I mean? Three out of four marriages go right down the shitter, right? If you were going skydiving and they told you three out of four parachutes weren't going to open, you'd be like, yo, fuck that. I'm not going. Like, I don't like those odds. I have a 75% chance of splatting on the ground. But there's something about getting married. People just have to do it, right? They're just like, is this the line to lose half my shit? Awesome. <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love women. I'm just not compatible with them. No, they got too much energy for me. You know what I said? They always have to be doing something. You know, like they can't like take a day off, you know? You can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. They just like see that open day. They're like, oh my God, let's fucking fill it up with shit. <laughs> They just come at you with like one horrible idea after I just know I doubt it when I go with at the end times Not if we beat by a super one that's how I feel I won't really be like Not if she can sleep, but if you might be key I think he won't really know we look for a sleep We eat that is all good I think that's what I see When I'm a soul, we like the king that he's on my feet Rain, I said to dream in the streets I'm in my form and they call me and I like the dream The same Behind the scenes, not a plan Strokes and setbacks, who gives a damn? Rejections and friends, they know me well But they rise from the ashes, breaking the spell Let the madness, they die right in To the souls of characters, they begin Crafting emotions, for the truth Breathing life into tales, all the new Spotlight dreams on the silver screen Actors and actresses living the scene From drama to comedy, they play the part Captivating hearts, igniting the spark Thank you.
Some legends, all all the stars of today. The Their stories inspire in every way, bringing worlds to life with every line. In the hearts of fans, they eternally shine. So here's to the actors, the queens and the kings With each role they take, a new adventure springs In the realm of imagination, they reign supreme Living out their passion in the spotlight Dreams on a silver screen Actors and actresses live in the scene From drama to comedy, they play their part Captivating hearts, igniting the spark Another They have the worst ideas They do, you ever get to this one, they'll be like You wanna go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that. You got to keep her happy, right? So what do you do? You agree? Yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $52 for eggs? Now you're thinking. Then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. You know, like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. I was dating this girl recently. She was like really into like women's issues, you know? Because women always go on TV, you know, they say all they want is to be treated exactly like guys. But if you listen to them, they don't. All they want is the good shit of being a guy. They're cherry picking. They look at a guy's life like it's like a buffet, right? Like you just can start picking out stuff, like same amount an hour, we'll take some of that. Pay for the movie, fuck that. You can keep that one, I don't like that one. This is nice, that's yucky, that's icky. Hey, come on, people, you can't choose. This girl gives me shit, she goes, well, why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job? I go, well, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. That's why I get the dollar more an hour. Come on, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. You hear a bump in the night, I gotta go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? You think I want to stay in the vault? Those 20 other sweaty guys sharing a bag of peanuts, you know? Praying to God I'm not the hostage who gets dragged out by the psycho with a gun to my head as he's asking the cops for a helicopter. Which I know he's not going to get, right? I know he's not getting the helicopter. So now I gotta make idle conversation with the 38 to my head going, dude, go for a rent a car. I think you should go for the rent a car. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Where are all those feminists then? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. You can take the most hardcore feminists, you know, some chick right in your face, you chauvinistic son of a bitch, you know, a little short, little haircut, you know. Second those flames break out, she'll twist those little hairs into pigtails. Ooh, I'm just a girl. I want to go play jump rope. No, no that's why I hated that movie, the, uh, the Titanic. Every girl I meet thinks that movie's romantic. It's irritating. I was like, that was really romantic, don't you think? It's like, no! It's a fucking horror film. <laughs> And they're always like, why? I'm like, because all the guys die. <laughs> See, you're watching it, trying to relate, going, who would I be? You'd be that chick floating away in the big piece of luggage, right? <laughs> I'm watching it going, who would I be? I'd be that dude when like the boat breaks in half, that dude who like falls straight down and bangs off the shit and goes in the water. <laughs> That's who I'd be. I'd be wearing a tuxedo, not because I wanted to, but you wanted to dress up that night, right? <laughs> I'd be falling. I'd be falling the whole way down going, I should have fucked that chicken first class. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm out of time. You guys have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. <laughs>